Na 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 Spider-Man! Spider-Man. There's no spoilers in this video, so you don't have to worry. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Hey, welcome to Mr. Teach Film Preach. And if you're a MCU Spider-Man lover, if you're a film lover like I am, and you learn from films as much as I do, then you're in the right place. If you're in the right place, click like down below and subscribe to my channel. Also hit that like button and also comment. Let me know, what did you guys think of Spider-Man No Way Home? It's finally here. Oh. Finally. This is a spoiler free review. I will not be revealing any major plot points in this video. Today we are talking about the 2021 next MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe film, Spider-Man No Way Home. This film was directed by John Watts who had directed uh, Homecoming and also Far From Home. No Way Home picks up exactly right at the end of Far From Home where Mysterio has revealed to the world that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. In this film, deals a lot with how Peter is reacting to being ousted, being revealed and his secret identity is stripped away from him and he's now trying to navigate the world as he heads into college and what that looks like for someone who's playing this dualistic life as a Spider-Man film. We've never seen Spider-Man ousted. I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. So I thought this is a really cool place to jump forward in. And he wants to change his destiny. So he goes to the master of the mystic arts, Doctor Strange, to try and reverse this world, to get a spell that will reverse or at least erase the memories of people that know him as Spider-Man. Things go wrong, multiverses are opened, and in comes in a bunch of other villains from different Spider-Man franchises from across different timelines. I had a blast with this film. And I have to say, coming into this movie, I had only seen one set of trailers. I was really trying to keep myself off the internet. But after watching the one trailer, I was a bit concerned that this movie was gonna be convoluted, cheap, ridiculous, have plot holes that are the size of Texas. It's the size of Texas, Mr. President. And just generally not make a lot of sense. And in some regards, I was a little bit validated with my concerns, especially in the first half of the film. But overall, I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. I ate my words as I was in the theater, smiling with the biggest grin on my face. There are some awesome twists and turns and things that they go in certain directions that I didn't expect. And the trailers kind of misled us as the audience to where this film was going to go. And I really love that. I love having my expectations kicked out of the door. I was a big fan of Tom Holland way back when he did a movie called The Impossible, who carries the film, who actually steals scenes from great actors like Naomi Watts and Ewan McGregor. It's so great to see him in No Way Home. It actually gave Tom Holland, as Peter Parker and Spider-Man, an emotional drive. This is by far, out of the Tom Holland movies, the most dynamic, the most emotional, the most gut-wrenching, the darkest of the Tom Holland films by far. Love that they leaned into that tone in that world, nostalgic characters interacting with the Spider-Man we have right now in the MCU and mixing from the Sam Raimi franchise with the amazing Spider-Man Mark Webb franchise was amazing. Yes, it was fan service, but I just didn't care. I don't care! This to me was my favorite Tom Holland Spider-Man film. The banter between the villains and the characters, just allowing the audience to watch scenes for an extended amount of time, two, three minute sections of the film where characters are just talking to each other and bantering back and forth and figuring things out about each other's different timelines and universes. And they did it in a comedic way, an impactful way, and in a way that made sense to the characters who are in this film. They didn't just make them cameos for the sake of cameos. They were actually characters living in this universe. It still packed an emotional punch, was thoroughly entertaining almost from start to finish. The return of Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Italian kissy fingers. Alfred Molina as Doc Ock just oozes charisma and is so entertaining and just eats up the screen. And just how they interact with him in this story is, I thought, well done, very creative, and really exciting to watch. Even if I like the simplicity of 
Homecoming a little bit more than this complicated, convoluted script. Besides the emotional beats, the weight that you can feel from the decisions and the choices and the consequences that happen to Peter Parker in this film, this is just a ton of fun. The movie's two and a half hours, but it clicks at about an hour and 45 minutes. It feels short because so much is going on. They really try and trim the fat off of the expository dialogue and they try and trim it down to its bare minimum that we can still understand it and still entertaining us the whole time. I felt a frame was never wasted in this movie. It always either progressed the story forward or developed our characters more deeper. The nostalgia in this film is phenomenal. It is so great to see all these different characters from these different universes. And yes, it is a bit fan service-y, but if you can shut your brain off and just sit back, relax, and enjoy it, I had a smile on my face the entire time. I was just like, mm, while also still telling a personal story about Peter Parker developing further as Spider-Man. Now let's talk about some of the things that maybe didn't quite work. First thing is the soundtrack. Now, out of the, all of the other Spider-Man films, Sam Raimi's trilogy, Mark Webb's two amazing Spider-Man films, both of those franchises have really well done scores and these great soundtracks with these original songs. I always felt like Tom Holland's trilogy really lacked an epic, strong, resonant, and uplifting theme song about Spider-Man. And they kind of use the old traditional Spider-Man song and kind of revamp and rework it, and I was never a fan of it. Where Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, that intro, I felt like the soundtrack in this movie just is generic and cheap. They actually had a composer that really created a theme song for Tom Holland's Spider-Man, creating a score that is dynamic, interesting, and epic. It would have actually raised this film up a little bit. My second one is that this movie is really, really unbalanced. First half of the film, it feels clunky. Brilliant, but lazy. Things that some characters do, like Doctor Strange, make no sense as an adult. He would never do anything like this. But he does these things because they need to get the, the plot point going. They need to make sure that the multiverse opens up. It feels rushed. It feels very cheap. It was not as well thought out. After a major point, like about hour and 10, 15 minutes in, after that moment, the rest of the film takes off like a rocket ship and it's so fun and it's so entertaining and there's so many great characters that show up and so many characters that interact with each other and have these great emotional beats. The first half was like, uh, kind of actually demeans Doctor Strange as a character. It sort of shows his stupidity in a lot of ways. And I know that this is a plot line from the comics itself. It doesn't mean it makes it a good storyline for film. You get this amazing, satisfying ending. I don't think I've ever actually smiled and been the entire time than I have from this film. Loving all of the character interactions and emotional depth that they chose to do with this film. It is a really fun, crowd-pleasing film. You're gonna have a great time. It is probably my favorite Spider-Man film out of the Tom Holland trilogy, where I think Homecoming is a better, well-made film. This is a more satisfying depiction to the character of Peter Parker, for Tom Holland's Peter Parker, and also while still involving the other Spider-Man universes in one film. And I thought the blend was really great. And even though the first half of the film was a little bit tricky and a little bit lazy, I was able to forgive it with the second half of the film being so strong, so amazing, and just a wonderful, wonderful ride. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Spider-Man No Way Home an A. <laughs> So what did you guys think of Spider-Man No Way Home? Were you in love with this film? Let me know what your favorite moments were. What were you expecting? I would love to know your thoughts and comments down below. And while you're down there, click like and subscribe to my channel for more content. Eternals, Dune, Ghostbusters Afterlife, and a whole other slew of films from 2021 that I've reviewed this year. Thank you for joining me today on Mr. Teach Film Preach. Stay focused, stay awesome, and as always, let's get taught.